Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Sherwan and you are watching Inside GST. So earlier I got a question which is really, uh, you can say, useful and important question. And the question is like, I wanna sell my fixed assets. I wanna sell my capital goods. Now how should I calculate the tax at the time of sale of the capital goods? Really good question and really important and useful question because a lot of people really sell the capital goods and they also want to know how is the treatment under GST. So the treatment under excise, under service tax or maybe service tax uh, I can say and also in VAT may be different but under GST those uh, sale of capital goods will be dealt under section 18 subsection number 6. Section 18 subsection 6 and you have to also read out the rule number 44. So rule number 44 sub rule number 1 clause number B and rule number 44 sub rule number 6 deals with the sales of capital goods so how to calculate the tax at the time of sale of the capital goods useful question great question so i want to answer to all the people so now section 18 subsection number 6 says that uh, at the time of sale or at the time of supply of capital goods you have to calculate the tax and you have to pay the tax so how to calculate and pay the tax so the tax would be higher of the two amounts. So I'm going to tell you the two amount. So whatever amount will be the higher, you have to pay tax on that amount. So how the amount will be calculated. So the first amount is the remaining input tax credit. The remaining input tax credit. Although the word is different under section 18 subsection 6, like uh, wording of the remaining input tax credit is different, but the meaning is same. Uh, I will give you the example so that you can also uh, better understand remaining input tax credit and the second item will be like the sale uh, like you are uh, selling you are transferring your capital goods so whatever will be the tax at the time of uh, whatever will be the tax on the transaction value and transaction value means like transaction value under section 15 so that is the second amount so whatever amount will be higher you have to pay tax on that amount so like this first amount remaining input tax credit second amount is the tax on the transaction value as determined under section 15 so whatever amount will be higher you have to pay uh, that amount as a gst so now uh, you understand it and uh, you need some example also so also that rule number 44 sub rule number one clause number b rule number 44 clause number c also deals with it so let me just give you an example so that you can better understand it. So suppose like you sell the assets at uh, 80,000 rupees and you take the input tax credit at the time of purchase of that capital goods and the amount of input tax credit at the time of purchase was 1,80,000. So you know that 1,80,000 is the input tax credit and you sell it on 80,000 and the tax rate at the time of sale of those capital goods is 18% supposing and you used that capital goods for four years six months and 15 days so that is the example and now you have to calculate like how to calculate the tax so four years six months 15 days we can say it four years seven months because we can round off the uh, like that 15 thing into uh, one month so four years seven months used item and then 18 percent tax rate one like 80 thousand ITC and then 80,000 is the sale assets. So now how to calculate it. So first one is like the remaining input tax credit. How to calculate the remaining input tax credit. So it will be calculated like this. The input tax credit which you take at the time of uh, purchase at the time of purchase which is like 180,000 and then divide by 60 and multiply by remaining useful life. So what is the 60 exactly? So under GST the law itself presume like any capital goods the useful life is five year so five multiplied by 12 12 means a month so it will be like 60 month and multiply by five is like because remaining uh, life in a month is five months so like four years seven months you have used and you know useful life is five year so four years seven months and five year is the useful life so balanced life is like five months so therefore one like eighty thousand which is input tax rate at the time of purchase divide by 60 60 means the five year and convert it into the month and then multiply by five means the remaining useful life in a month and you will be get those remaining input tax credit so that is like 50 15 thousand and the second amount which is itself given in uh, section number 18 subsection 6 is like this 
the tax on the transaction value so tax on the transaction value and transaction value here is the 80000 and the tax rate is 18% so this will be like 14400 so whatever amount is the higher amount like 15000 and uh, 14400 so whatever amount will be the higher you have to pay that amount as a gst so you know that 15000 is higher so while uh, like making the tax invoice uh, you have to show that one also but you have to give the tax on this amount so like you have to pay gst 15000 not 14400 remember that that's how it's gonna work so really uh, i mean there is nothing uh, in which you can uh, like misunderstood really simple uh, really simple thing you have to calculate the balance useful life and balance useful life should be calculated in a month just like input tax credit divided by 60 60 will always be same in any cases and multiply by balance useful life in a month you will be get one figure and then calculate another figure which will be taxed on the transaction value whatever amount will be the higher you have to pay that amount so that is completely the provision and one or two important thing which also is relevant for you is like this so when you will sell it like uh, when you will transfer the capital goods and you have to also make the tax invoice obviously so when you will uh, make the tax invoice so one more thing which is very important to you look like this so during the month in which you want to sell your capital assets you have to give the detail into table number uh, 4 of GSTR 1 so that thing like this thing is not the reversal of input tax credit that is the amount which you are paying to the government so that is not the reversal so don't show 15,000 into table number 11 of GSTR 1 no you have to show this figure into the table number 4 of GSTR 1 and remember this this is very important so 15,000 is not the reversal of tax or reversal of input tax credit this is the amount of tax which you have to pay from your pocket remember this and also provide you to rule number 44 sub rule number 6 also says that uh, same thing like provided that where the amount so determined is more than the tax determined on the transaction value of the capital goods the amount determined shall form part of the output tax liability and the same shall be fin uh, furnished in form table uh, form number gst gstr1 so that thing which i want to say to you like this is the table number four of gstr1 not table number 11 and one more thing the like this calculation you have to give, uh, calculate this thing for separately for central tax separately for state tax separately for uh, igst so like uh, at the time of purchase you taken the cgst sgst and might be igst so separate calculation will be done for three different uh, taxes and one more important thing uh, provide you to section number 18 subsection number 6 also says something it says like provided that where the refactory bricks mold and dice zigs and fixers are supplied as scrap so when you want to sell it as a scrap then the taxable person may pay the tax on the transaction value of such goods determined under section 15 so in case of a uh, refactory bricks mold and zigs mold and dice zigs and fixture you can you may pay the tax on the transaction value as determined under section 15 uh, you don't need to calculate this thing like uh, remaining input tax credit so don't need to do this thing just pay the tax on the transaction value and you will be okay so i think you might be clear now so if you have any query ask on the comment section if you like the video like it and if you are not the part of the channel then subscribe the channel what are you doing man subscribe it right now punch it into the face and subscribe the channel and uh, just do the thing share the video if your other people who are wondering how to calculate the gst on the sale of uh, capital goods uh, they are wondering and you have the solution and i'm giving the solution just share the video to those persons so that they can also educate about this thing all right guys so i think i should end this video we will meet again in the next video till then bye bye